I recently completed this chess set and all the chess pieces and I was wondering what would be a nice way to display these chess pieces up close. So on YouTube I saw some of the more professional people use a small display stand that rotates and I thought I have something similar, I can use that. But after a few tries I decided maybe I should invest in something a bit more appropriate and looking online I found this nice small rotating display stand that has an internal motor and I thought two to three days shipping is a long time. I'd rather spend two weeks making my own and I would make it a hand cranked version. And this is what I'll be showing in this video. The plans for the display stand is in the description below. It is available for free and that means on to building a rotating hand cranked display stand. The majority of the two weeks was spent designing the stand and this is not a very interesting bit to show so we'll skip ahead to where I am cutting the parts. The parts were cut from 3mm Baltic birch plywood. The sides were also made from wood but it is cut in such a way that it can bend. My idea was to use marbles as bearings, but I've seen enough projects where marbles were used and the marbles were not the same size or even round, so I thought that I'll skip the hassle later on and sort all the marbles for size and consistency and to make sure that I have enough marbles of the right size. After this, it was just a case of gluing all the different parts together this included gluing the inner rings on the top and the bottom parts that held the marbles. The concentric rings were indexed with small holes and toothpicks so that they were exactly concentric. And after I pushed through the toothpicks and pressed everything together with a bit of glue, I used a normal nail clipper to remove the toothpicks. After the toothpicks were removed, I used a small plane or a piece of sandpaper to make sure that the top part of the display stand was completely smooth. Next I started to assemble the flexible outer shell. And while these parts are quite flexible, care needs to be taken not to overextend them as they do still break when handled too roughly or bent too suddenly. So one of the things that I did was make them a bit wet and that helped to bend them a bit easier. The supports for the top and bottom plates were added to the outer shell. I glued them in place before I completed the ring and this made it a bit easier to assemble the whole thing. I made a few shaft collars by gluing together wooden washers and drilling a hole through them and then using a small screw to pin the shaft in place. The gears I used were exactly the same design as for an orrery that I built a few years ago and since it worked so well in the previous project I thought I'd just use the same and adapt them to this project. I glued some of the shaft collars to the gears while some of the shaft collars were kept separate to keep the axles in place when assembling. After the glue has dried I fitted everything together to see if everything worked and it seemed to be perfect, so the next step was on to painting. I painted everything black, just as the small display stand that I saw online. While waiting for the paint to dry, I made some non-slip feet by gluing discs to a piece of rubber. And after the glue has dried, I cut out the discs from the rubber sheet. Finally it was time to do the complete assembly and I started with adding the marbles and making sure the whole display stand rotates freely. After the marbles were in place I added the gear and secured it in place with a few screws and then placed the small gear and the handle on the side. 
through this process, I constantly checked that everything meshed well and everything was rotating freely. I also used a small bit of candle wax to make sure the gears uh, do not stick. And then when I was happy that everything rotates nicely, I screwed the bottom plate in place and it's done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It runs smoothly, it doesn't stick. And as I have mentioned, the files will be available for free. The link is in the description below. And although the files is for a laser cutter, it can easily be adapted for 3D printing. The sides might not work that well because the slits are very, very thin and I don't think that would be printed. But it's easy enough to just make a new outer shell or design a new outer shell. The uh, same for CNC, it needs to be very, very fine rotor bits for that to work. And I will leave you with a display of a few things that I've made. Some of these things, like the smaller puzzles, I am thinking of giving away in the future. So check out this channel if you are interested in maybe getting one or two of these items. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.